Welcome back to Secret Weapons. And today we are taking a look at all of the Chase Bliss Audio delay pedals. I guess except for the Mood, which is technically a delay pedal. Uh, we have it here. It's, it's over there, but we're not going to talk about it today. Uh, we're talking about the analog delays from Chase Bliss Audio because um, I get a lot of questions about my favorite delay or my favorite analog delay or even just my favorite Chase Bliss Audio delay. And uh, I wanted to do a video where I could kind of run down the hows and the whys of each of them, kind of where their strengths are, which is especially interesting to me because uh, recently I was making a really small little mini board and I found that uh, I had put the red knob tonal recall on and then two days later I swapped it out for my old trusty OG blue knob tonal recall because for the board that I was making, this honestly just worked better. It sounded better, it sat alongside the other pedals I was using a little bit better. Uh, and that got me thinking beyond just that basic conversation of Therme tonal recall, it made me realize that there are actually some character differences between the two tonal recalls that are also worth discussing. So I wanted to make this video uh, and not make it too long. I don't want this to be one of my 45 minute feature length videos that you see on this uh, channel. I just wanted to kind of do a quick rundown on the differences between these pedals, where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, um, and all of that stuff. So. One of the things I will say right off the bat, if you've been around here for any amount of time, you know that I don't like to compare and talk about which pedal is better. I think that they're all kind of application specific. Having said that, this is my favorite pedal of all time. The Chase Bliss Audio Therme is the best delay on the market, and it's my favorite pedal that anybody makes. So there's going to be no lack of bias in terms of how much I like this delay. But... That is not to say that it is an objectively better pedal than, than this one is, or any other pedal is. It's better than most pedals, but we're not talking about them. We're talking about these two. This has a very specific different set of characteristics. One of the big things between these two is the warmth, I guess, kind of that gentleness of the repeats. The Therme is a little bit sharper and a little bit brighter, and the low-pass filter is a lot more kind of lo-fi, resonant, low-pass low frequency kind of thing. This is a lot more of a traditional, the repeats get darker, but not in a kind of filter sweepy kind of way, which this does. So it's little changes like that that might heavily sway you in one way or the other. Uh, I know a couple of guys who, like me, swear by the tone control, the low-pass filter on the Therme, and people who it completely doesn't work in their rig. This is amazing for those people. Even between these two, there is a big difference that goes farther than just how much delay time is on tap here. Red knob's brighter. My, the, the repeats on this one are also a little bit gainier, so you have to keep the mix lower overall. The blue knob, I tend to find that the lower headroom on it can make for some really cool, gentle moments when you're not pushing drives and big, loud pedals in front of it. This can actually sit very perfectly in a mix but will also get lost in reverb a lot faster. It's weird, weird things like that that I think make this video at least worth cutting together. And I guess we'll see if anybody else notices the intrinsic and important differences between very similar pedals as much as I do. So we're gonna go to the top down thing right now. Uh, we're gonna run through some of the obvious stuff like delay times, but we're really just going to run through kind of where these things stack up when set very similarly, where they diverge from one another, and at the very end, we're going to do some weird stuff where we talk about the pitch shifting on the Therme, how you can mimic it on a tonal recall. And then at the very, very end, we're going to do a multi-tap delay using all three, which is just obscene. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, before we get started, uh, let's run through kind of what our quote-unquote dry signal is going to be under these circumstances. We're not going to use a ton of reverb. We're not going to use any other delays other than the three tonal recalls right now. Um, what you're going to be hearing is the 29 panels Yuna into the diamond compressor the Benson preamp, tonal recalls, blue, red, and Therme in that order, uh, LCAP, Hologram, Empress, Mercury 7, Strymon. The only things we're going to be using are the dry pedals before the tonal recalls, and then the Mercury 7 and the Iridium, and, that's what this, and this is what that sounds like. Let's listen to the blue knob tonal recall. Red 
red knob. The two things right off the bat right there, as you can tell, uh, there's a lot more gain on the wet signal, on the red knob tonal recall. I don't know if that is a byproduct of the second chip in there, or if that is just internal gain structuring that I could change with the dip switches, or the uh, the um, internal trim pots that are in there. They are, they are in there. I haven't messed with them because I try not to mess with the trim pots in my Chase Bliss stuff. Uh, but you can see the mix is a quarter of the way down on the red knob and it's a totally different experience. I mean, it's almost the exact same volume. Like. It's also a lot brighter. And then lastly, Fulbright Therme. So yeah, I mean, obviously you can tell that the two tonal recalls, of course, are intensely similar, but with more presence, more sparkle on the red knob, which I think is really cool. I, I honestly think they both have a lot of value for uh, filling different roles in that way. You can get something a lot more subtle, a lot more easily out of the blue knob. So like, I would say that if you, you know, if you introduce a lot more reverb, you're going to lose the repeats on the blue knob a lot faster. So you've got like a nice like dotted eighth full bright. But if you kick over to like a bigger reverb, You'll lose it a lot quicker. That red knob. That stays, that stays in your mix a lot more robustly. One of the other really big benefits to that extra volume in the red knob would be when you switch over from long to that both mode, which is almost like a, a faux reverb kind of thing. We'll take out the Mercury 7 to kind of illustrate this point. 
Let's start with the blue knob and you can hear the volume drop that you experience when you go to both mode. You really do lose a lot of it very quickly. I mean, it sounds amazing, especially when you stack it with a reverb again uh, to kind of add some density to your notes. So, so like with nothing. tell but if you bring that into the red knob you'll notice that same let's do the, the illustration again from the uh, single chip by itself right off the bat the extra brightness really helps keep that more present longer. But so that you don't get it lost, you can bring that mix back up. And really keep it very present in whatever it is that you're doing in terms of stacking. Here's the here's the trade-off with the with the red knob for me at least. Especially as you start to roll that tone knob back, you really start getting into some places where I feel like the red knob can kind of always feel a little more present in your mix than you would like it to. Get that that plate back on. So if you're going for kind of like a low, a lower uh, brightness, like a darker, warmer, more murky repeat, I feel like sometimes the tonal recall red knob can get a little bit. Like that's very present in the mix to me. make sure that, that saying is correct.
really gorgeous when you get down into those darker repeats, but like you really got to make sure that you're keeping an eye on that mix knob because it's very, very easy for it to get out of hand. I feel like the red knob demands a lot more of attention to the way that you run that mix than the blue knob does. Once again, this could totally just be the way that mine's calibrated, but... <laughs> Okay, before we get too far down into the rabbit hole of tone knob comparisons between the two tonal recalls, this is the point where the therme needs to be reintroduced because what I think is the biggest, kind of coolest aspect of the Chase Blasadio therme is the tone control. Whereas on the red, on the red knob, you go, you can basically go from something like this at the full bright. <laughs> something like this at about halfway. Therme has a low pass filter, a slightly resonant low pass filter that just sits exactly where you would want it to for this kind of thing. So full bright. Oh yeah, and also the low pass filter interacts very, very aggressively with the regen, so you have to be very careful about these things. almost sounds like kind of vine, like old vinyl kind of thing in terms of the way that that sits. Let's take all three to full wet actually just to really illustrate kind of where they sit at different points in their in their uh, mix in their tone controls.
Let's actually do this test again. Um, we're going to add the Stram and El Capistan afterwards because the way that these three pedals react to full wet is you're not getting a bunch of repeats out of them in that same kind of crisp, definable way when they're at full wet. So let's go back to a slightly brighter uh, red knob at full wet and give that a listen. And then Thermae, because I also do really like using these pedals as kind of almost zero time dry modulators. Now, of course, you can hear the modulation across the board is pretty similar. I'm using all of them as kind of a standard sine wave <clears throat> with very similar very similar uh, rate and depth. I tend to like them in a very specific place. We're not going to really dive into the, like, the really craziness of, of each of them because I just don't find a lot of value in going, here's how wacky a modulation can get. I'm trying to stay in the realm of like, what would I use this for? That kind of thing. One of the big drawbacks of Thermae, as has been discussed on forums and everything countless times, is the lack of a time control. That is true. It is a bummer. The, the thing that makes it a little bit less of a bummer is... The thing that makes it a little bit less of a bummer is that you can always just kind of like set your time on your MIDI controller or whatever, or you can tap in a really fast tempo. I turned off clock so that we can now actually kind of go to those like really fast speeds. Um, and here's why. The tonal recall can do a kind of real-time chorusing thing that is really cool. get you some like really great chorus tones. Thermae, rather than doing kind of a coursing thing, in my opinion, does one of the coolest lo-fi sounds. 
So here is a full wet, as fast as it'll go therme. We're not going to really look at maximum delay time on the therme because it's a complicated issue that really is about 44 seconds or something like that, but you wouldn't use it like that. We will do just kind of a quick necessary max delay time on tonal recall, max delay time on tonal recall red knob mod. <laughs> So blue knob. Let's remember to turn off the L cap. Okay, maximum delay time on the tonal re recall blue knob. is red knob. On the long mode. discussed earlier there's another set of chips so it's about twice i mean it's exactly twice as long but yeah you know you get it okay so we are back after a brief technical difficulty to talk about the elephant in the room therme as a pitch shifting delay over the tonal recalls but first let's take a quick listen to how good the pitch shifting on the therme sounds
I love is taking it to a nice slow speed, making those repeats really, really dark and warm. Okay, so if at the end of all this, you have found that the tonal recall really kind of like hits that sweet spot for you, um, which I get it, like. There really is no wrong answer here, which is great. Um, I will show you a quick trick. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram for a long time, you may have seen this implemented back in the pre-therme uh, dark ages. When I first got my tonal recall, I discovered that you could get a really cool musical inter like interval by switching between dotted eighth and eighth note on the subdivision knob if you had tapped in your tempo. Now note, it doesn't work if you've used your time knob to set your tempo because the time knob operates independently of your subdivision switch. But what I discovered was if you have your tempo tapped in, which we currently have, and you're on eighth note, you could do something like this. I really enjoy. Uh, found to be a little bit of a hassle to do it by hand like that. So what I did was this morning in setting up for this video, above my tonal recall red knob uh, bypass control, I set a uh, CC message to switch between a dotted eighth and an eighth note on that switch using uh, CC messages, which if you have a morning star, you can just go into the uh, MIDI dictionary and find the, the controls for this. Incredibly, incredibly useful. But what that did was open up this. Works on both of them, works on both tonal recalls. Uh, the nice thing about that also is you have six different subdivision switches, uh, subdivision options on your tonal recall, which means you could go in and experiment with any kind of shift that you want. I just found that that was the one that was the most musical in terms of from one specific pole position to an adjacent one, which is the only thing you can do if you're not using MIDI, but MIDI really opens that up, which is a really cool thing.
So I think that kind of brings us to the end of this video, to the end of kind of all the comparison stuff. If you know me, I'm not a big comparison person. I don't really like operating in which is better kind of things, which is why we didn't really talk in those terms today. Instead, we focused mostly on kind of showcasing the different strengths and the different kind of feels that they have. Like I'm a big proponent of like, you can't explain interest. And if during this video you found yourself going, wow, there is something about that blue knob tonal recall that really just sits right for me. That sits in a better way than the red knob. That's totally fine. If you feel like the Therme is the right one for you, then great. Um, like I said, there is no best here. It's just different sounds for different applications, which I really, really enjoy. So on that note, in terms of not picking a specific one, let's go out on kind of a fun, weird, multi-tap delay thing that I discovered earlier today in setting up for this that I really, really enjoyed. All right, I think we have all of our parameters set up. Here's a fun little, uh, totally unnecessary, totally overpriced multi-tap delay. Enjoy. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative. I hope you found this uh, entertaining. Um, to close things out, I wanna do something a little bit weird, which is we are going to go ahead and turn on all three of our tonal recalls to separate subdivisions, lock together with MIDI clock, to just kind of like play us out on one of the most unnecessarily expensive three-head multi-tap delays of all time. <laughs>